principle is talking that there is explanation for everything. Mm -hmm. If there is anybody that is having results anywhere, it's because they have followed some laws. They have done something right. Mm -hmm. In that direction. Mm -hmm. If they are getting prosperity and you are not, there is something, there are some laws that they have, they have obeyed. All of you are praying, but you are not doing anything. But he is obeying some laws. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if he is, you know, you know, living good and everything is working out for him, there are some, so no, any, for any effect that you are seeing, there is a cause. For any result that you are seeing, there is an explanation. So which means that if you see anybody developing or having results or, you know, things working out for them, go and find out what they have done. There are no mysteries. Life is explainable in that way. So, the first thing about coming to your, to your year, this new year that we are talking about, the first thing we discover is that everything will remain the same. Unless you discover some laws that are applicable in this case and use them and force. The second thing we discover is that the speed of growth that you would have or development that you have or changes that you have, the speed and the level will depend on the amount of speed and pressure, you know, acceleration that you are, uh, yes, that you are asserting. Then the third thing is that so if you don't sow so somewhere, don't expect to reap there. If you did not do anything to, to warrant result, don't, it's mysticism to be expecting some result from, from nowhere. So, and anything you do, there will always be consequences. So if you don't do anything, the consequence is that you will die of hunger. Mm -hmm. If you do, you will reap more than the one you have sown. So law of, so, law, law of uh, sowing and, and reaping is not, it's not removed. So go and sow, not just money, because when churches preach about this, they're only talking about you sowing money. Yeah. But, but, but you know, the Bible didn't mean this money when they say, so the law of sowing and reaping will not be right. It's not talking about money. It's talking about going to work for real. <laughs> he put Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and said, till the ground. It's not talking about money. Go and put money in the ground. He's talking really, go work. But churches have made people to think that the only thing you need to do is to be going every month, every Sunday to throw your tithe and offering. You must go and cultivate your own. The place we cultivate, the place you develop, the place you till is where you should expect fruit from. If you didn't till anything from there, if you didn't develop anything, cultivate anything, it's foolishness to be expecting that God will just come out of nowhere and do things for you. So, you, know, you don't just use one law and think that everything will work for you. You've got to apply the right uh, prescription for whatsoever need that you have. If you want to raise up children, you know, I have a whole series of teachings uh, on Facebook and on YouTube and on, uh, on my blog about how to raise children. If you want to, anything you want to do, there are books and there are, uh, there are teachings, sorry, there are teachings that will be able to, that will be applicable to the very thing that you, you you know, you want. So there are laws responsible for, for everything. Now, if you are in Nigeria, Shioma is providing our information here. I have teachings on different topics and in all directions. I need three or four people to talk about the first law. Why you could become your own prophet. Why life is predictable. Three, four people come out. And then three, four people to talk about the second law. And three, four people to talk about the third law. And generally, three, four people to, to sum up everything, why life is predictable, and why you should, you can become your own prophet, rather than look, uh, uh, looking for some prophets to predict your destiny. <laughs> My name is Ujuade Joshua. Pastor, thank you very much for the wonderful teaching, sir. Um, I've had a question constantly on my heart, and through this teaching, I've gotten an answer. What to particular me. question? The question is that, how can I know God more? And you said something very strong, sir. You said, we discover God by discovering his principles and his laws. Yes. So I found out that the way to know God more and to imitate him and to be like him is to begin to operate 
by his principles and his laws. Brother Kenny from London, from England. Yes. Um, thank you, Pastor. Um, I was able to get something spectacular about the first law, and that is uh, the law of um, uh, the law of um, everything remains. Static. Everything remains um, um, static until a pressure is applied. And um, being a nurse, I know that for me to treat a depressive uh, patient, I need to apply the same antidepressant. And psychotic cannot be used to apply, I mean, to treat um, depressive illness. And in the same sense, <coughs> I need to apply a corresponding force for me to be able to gain a result. <coughs> Without that, no result can be gained. You know, I, I was reflecting while Pastor was, while I was um, talking to us. In the past, I was indebted. And uh, I was applying a spiritual force. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because when I was a student in England, I studied in England. When I was a student, I ran into debt. So when I, when I started working, I was paying off, but it became too burdensome for me. So I listened to a pastor from America. I, I, I wouldn't like to mention the name. But he said... Today, when, today is the 28th of January, uh, the 28th of December. Right. It's been 2012. 800. Ah. 800 ah. Yes. Because it was 2008. Exactly. And, ah. and I kept on sowing seed. And the more I sowed the seed, the more indebted I became. Oh. And I got to a point where I was, I was uh, believing God for miraculous cancellation of debt. So I applied a wrong force again. I was praying. Even that was the time I wrote letters to all my creditors. I said, in the name of... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is real. This, so it this, happened this, to this, him. This, this is real. It happened to him. And, and I wrote letters and I photocopied them and I sent each to uh, uh, all my creditors. Said, in the name of Jesus, because I forbade the law of sowing and reaping, Cancel my debt. <laughs> some replied, some didn't reply, but the replies I got were in red ink. You know, in England, when you are indebted, you get letters in red ink. You know, and so that kept going on, on and on, on and on, on and on, until 2010. When I started discovering certain principles that, I mean, I'm quite happy because Pastor reinforced what I've known in me today. You need to apply a corresponding force before you can get it. So, you know, I, I think I know the man of God that we were take, uh, sending in 2,800 to. Because, and that person, through your money and the money of other people, he will be saying, I need 300 people there, I need 100 people to give 1,000 each. The guy is having one jet, two jet, three jet, house, and you are in debt. Yeah. And they don't even care. They don't care that you are about to go to jail, you are about to go bankrupt, and many other people like you like that. They will just believe, or so more. The one you sold before is not enough. Being a Christian doesn't mean to throw away your senses yeah. or your brain. Yeah. Common sense is not against Christianity. Yeah. Christianity is not against common sense. Yeah. And it's a pity that these things happen. Thank you so much. You. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Joseph. Um, I want to appreciate Pastor for the message. Actually, what I learned is that we don't break law. Law breaks us. Because when you go against law, you face some certain consequences. Because like when you don't apply the right law, you don't expect to have a positive result. 
And what I actually learned is that everything on earth is being governed by law. And we have to apply this certain law in the right direction for us to be able to have a positive result. What, so you are talking in general or in particular law? In general, that is general. what I summarized from my side. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Visayo, and um, I'll speak on the second law, which says the force that is needed to change a situation should be corresponding to the size of the result you want. So this made me to start thinking that if I have a goal I want to achieve, that is telling me how much force, how much work I need to do. And I'll use Pastor's life as an example. Pastor said yesterday that he needs about 500, he wants to reach out to half a billion people on planet Earth in his lifetime or after. That is why he's working this hard, meaning the summation of the lives he wants to affect is corresponding to the amount of force he is putting in his work daily. So if I have a goal, my life vision, I should think of how much work or force I need to back that up. And that will be the only thing that will make me achieve that goal. Second law, thank you. Praise God. My name is Bella from Ternophil. And I want to say, I want to go back to the first law that we spoke about. We said an object would be at rest or continue moving in the same motion if, unless um, acted upon by an external force. And I don't know when I heard that. I never really, I mean, I had heard of the laws of motion before, but I never actually applied them to my life in this aspect. So um, for a while now, I've been experiencing like serious stagnation, especially in my spiritual life. Like, Okay, I got saved earlier this year, and then after a while, like initially it was like I was growing at a really rapid rate, and then at a point I just didn't know what to do next. And every time, like I would be praying, I would be praying, I would be asking, like, oh, what? I wrote to a couple of like um, men of God that used to be in my church, so I asked them, like, I don't know what to do and everything. But then I would never actually follow through. I would never listen to what they had to say. Like, I would just stop and I will be like, okay. So I wasn't growing at all. So what I'm going to do from now on, I'm going to start really critically thinking about what I can do. Because it's not about asking, asking, asking all the time. I need to actually apply myself. So that's the external force. Hello, everyone. My name is Chim Dindu, please and a um, fourth year medical student. From what we learned today, what stood out for me was that how God has created every single thing in its fullness and every, everything works by laws and principles. At first, I was like, when Pastor said that God has created everything in such a way that he does not need prayer to function, it stood out for me because God created everything and said it is good. And it doesn't need prayer to function. So I know there are so many times in my life that I felt like, oh, if I don't pray, this is not going to happen. And then I've, I'm correcting that today. And then another thing, too, is the first law also that stood out for me says that everything will remain stagnant unless you do something to apply a force, then it's going to move from there. Um, I always said, okay, when I leave medical school, I want to leave medical school a millionaire. But trust me, I've not done anything about it. I just stay or I keep sowing seeds here and there. But today I've ah, learned ah, that. Ah, <laughs> so today so I've learned that. So sowing seed was supposed to give you money? No, no, no. no. From Prosperity. No, 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 no. From, From yesterday, yesterday I learned that giving may give you money. But if you want to become wealthy, you have to apply the principles of wealth. Well, giving will not give you money. Yeah. <laughs> giving will only make uh, especially tight and offering, we only make it so that you know you you know the courses and the consequences will not come to you, mm -hmm. you know, so that you just be able to obey. You are just honoring God. You should actually be giving not because you want to receive something back. Mm -hmm. It's because you want to honor God. Yes. Even if you die, no courses to uh, or anything about it. You just want to obey God because you love God. That's why you should be giving, mm -hmm. or because you want to bless other people. Mm -hmm. Don't be expecting anything left and right. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you want now to receive something, 
work for it. And then God will also cause the other thing that you have not worked for to come. But when you are just depending on these things and looking out for, you know, because you are sowing, that is actually, you know, that is actually becoming, uh, it's like a business. It's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so from these principles today. And we're already in fourth year. Yeah, I'm in fourth year. And I'm working towards it already. So I'm already, so like, <laughs> Not that I didn't learn, I learned this principle today because it's enforced in my life now. I already started learning some principles of finances earlier, but from today's lesson, I'm going to apply it more in my life. And I believe God that by, not that I believe God, I know that by sixth year, I'm going to achieve what the goals have set. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Blessing, a um, final year medical student in Jimita. Okay, um, before, before I listen to Pastor Sunday, okay, I used to have this, like, okay, you know, back then in Nigeria, we all have this mentality, even said it, that we have to pray before anything, like, before you do anything, you have to pray before you travel or something. Yesterday, when we were coming in the morning, like, <laughs> when we were coming yesterday morning, okay, like, after, like, pa uh, Pastor Louis prayed before we embarked on the journey, then Pastor Joshua asked the question that, okay, that how many of us prayed personally, like, like for concerning the journey, nobody rose up their hands. So he said something. Was like, do you know if it's Nigeria now? Before you travel, you will have kabash. You like fast for like, like two days, ten days. So like, okay, we all have that mentality in Nigeria. But like today, I've actually because me too, I actually believe that, that if I don't pray, I feel like something bad is going to happen to me, or something bad is going to happen to my family. So like sometimes even if I like if I if I sleep off. That and I forgot to pray. Like I wake up in the middle of the night and like, <laughs> and like pray. Yeah. So you are actually, you are actually being driven, not by love for God or relationship, yeah. but by fear. Yeah. Yeah. And where there is love, where there is perfect love, yeah. there is no fear. Okay. Secondly, about the first um, law, because I should ask myself because in Ukraine I noticed that. Like, as we medical students, because you give the illustration about medical students and stuff, I noticed that most people that party, most people that, do, like, they don't live the godly life, and, like, they do better than we, the believers, like, we that call ourselves Christian, we that go to church and stuff. Like, I asked myself that question, I'm like, why is it like that? I actually realized that most of them don't have the time to study because they spend mo most of their time like doing God's work. Okay, yes, they're impacting lives, but what about their, their, like, their books? Because God will not, okay, like if you study and you ask God, you pray that God should give you return to memory, of course God is going to help you to remember. But if you don't study, how is it you pray for him to like help you to remember? How is he going to help you to remember when you don't have anything in your head? It's not <laughs> possible. <laughs> Not like, to remember. <laughs> like it's really not possible because you can't remember anything because you've not studied anything. So God is not a magician. He cannot perform magic for you to remember anything. That's why like, then this, the second law also, like okay, in my country where I come from, they said there's this there's a saying that <coughs> Babu monkey they walk, Babu they chop. <laughs> like because if you don't you can't just be there and expect other people to walk and you you have to benefit. Is not possible because okay, like gave the illustration about Japan. Japan, of course, Japan. They are like, oh, like they work a lot. They like most of the things we use now. They like developed everything, like even the phones and everything. But we can't just stay there. Oh, and you said something about favor, because I don't know. So so many people have abused the word favor, because I don't like if. God, yes, God's favor, God's grace is sufficient for everybody. But I don't know, people has, people have actually abused that word favor because if you don't put effort, if you don't like say something about <coughs> speed, if you don't the level of speed, the level of effort to put put on something, there's no how God is going to favor you. Okay, like okay, if you have a if if you don't have an idea about something, like she said, she wants to, um, she has plan of um, be a big, become. If she doesn't have plans, like how, if she doesn't have things in her head, like how to like. Actually, there's no how God is going to make that plan to like come. So you just have to like um, put effort in everything you do. Because, for example, if a man is having a family and is always in church every day praying that God should give him money, God should help him, and he doesn't put effort to like, okay, he doesn't have a work, he doesn't have a job, 
is it God that will go and submit to CV for him? <laughs> of course, God cannot go and submit. He has to go like to different places and submit CV. Yeah, you have to pray that God should like help help you to secure the job. That's why actually I learned that you have to like put efforts. Like you don't have to be lazy in like things and just be waiting that yes, God is going to do it because yes, I have God. I pray that He's going to do. It. Of course, He's not going to do something if you don't put apply your effort. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my, name is, yeah, my name is uh, Stephen. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to start by sharing this that I, I learned actually from my dad. I uh, see, uh, I grew up in Nigeria, and my family were like, uh, we started from like humble beginnings, like from scratch. So, like, uh, my, my parents have this, like, we surround ourselves with so many pastors. Like, if anything happens, like, before, if we meet, it just happened, my mom would have called, like, four or five parties. <laughs> you see, I'll tell you, read this, um, pray into water and stuff like that. So, like, just recently, like, three or four years ago, see, when I came back, I came back home, and, and I was with my dad. So, some t- my, my, my phone, my dad's phone was ringing, and it was, like, a pastor calling, so I gave him, my dad didn't answer, and I know my dad, like, before, fast, would have answered. <laughs> and my dad told me something, he said, he said, like, like what my dad really said, he said that he's now his own pastor. <laughs> he said, <laughs> see, see, <laughs> see, my dad said he's now his own pastor because my dad told me something that, like some of them that told him some kind of prophecy, you understand? Mm-hmm. It comes true, but see what happens. Like my dad is in the military. So then he was a captain, and from captain to a ma- to he's going to go to a major, you understand? And from moving from a captain to a major, that means your allowance and everything will increase. So during then, he gets so many calls, they'll tell you, okay, in the next, like, they know, like, this is that most of these people you will share, you share, you tell them what, you share, you share so many stuffs with, with them, you understand, yes. without you knowing consciously that those stuffs, they do some calculations, some, yeah. like I say in Nigeria, some, some magu magu, and then it becomes, they spice it up, becomes a prophecy for you, and you're happy, you're all geared up, like, this is what's going to happen. And you see, they told my dad that, okay, in the next five years, after calculating that it's going to be in the next five years, that... These are things that are going to happen. These are going to work out. And eventually it happens. But the thing is that it becomes, it became too much that they, they constantly start stopping my dad. Like, his phone is always ringing and everything. And after my dad told that he has, he, like, he came to, like, he played that he has, after going to so many leadership conferences and reading so many books, he realized that these people are actually not, he shouldn't depend on these people. He should depend on, he should depend on principles that he has gotten from this book. Because you see that after depending on these principles, like it's it's helped it's it helped him so much. That was probably stuff. giving them money. That's why they were calling. No, <laughs> not yeah, yeah, yeah. Like money, <laughs> yeah, money. Sometimes cars. You understand? To the pastor. Of course. Like, see, my dad is this kind of person. Like, he loves prophet of God. You understand? He believes. <laughs> he used to. He used to. Yeah, yeah. He used to. He used to <laughs> yeah, yeah. That one. He, he used to love prophet of God because he believed that like. Like, he's a very humble man. He believes, like, when you just humble yourself under them, you understand, you're going to get so much from them, you understand? He still does that, but he said that, like, it's not everything, you're, it's not all, everything you get from them. Of course, everybody has his positive and negative side, you understand? So you have to get what you want from them, you understand? Not everything is for you. You, get, you have to get, like, what you want from them. So, like, after this, like, he has, he has, he has, even, he has changed so, so much, like... <laughs> My dad is, like, something happened recently in my, in my family, like, when my dad wanted to post my dad from, from where he's into somewhere that was not very good. So, after that happened, my mom was very anxious. She was so, so, like, worried and everything. Immediately, she picked up the phone. She called me also, and she, and after calling me, like, she told me she has called so many people to start praying, and, and when, she, when I called my dad, I saw my dad was laughing. <laughs> something that was, like, it's supposed to be heartbreaking, like, you are going from somewhere very lucrative, someone, but my dad was laughing, and my dad was like, I shouldn't worry that, that my, she knows my mom is over there. I told my mom that she didn't worry that. No need to call anybody that. He knows like what he did in that place. Mm-hmm. You understand? And the referrals is going to get, is going to take him somewhere greater. Not that, that thing that just happened, it shouldn't uh, cause any worry. Yeah. And I tell you, 25, like 24 hours later, you understand? They called my, my dad got a call. They told her there was a mistake, that that place, it was not, it was not like it was a kind of mm-hmm. mistake. They took him somewhere even better than when he, where he was, you understand? So this is, this is like hard work. This is what you get from hard work, not someone telling you it will happen to you. You know you are going to get it. That's how being your own prophet, you understand? You know you are going to get it from your own hard work, not someone giving you some, some prophetic word or something like that. And also, uh, 
for the third law, for every action, there is an opposite and core reaction. Like, for me, in my studies, I'm the kind of person that I give 80%, then 20% I, like, I try to play a little, then I use. <laughs> but for my 40 and 50, I've, I've realized that uh, just, just, you just have to constantly continue to develop yourself. You understand? Even if you read, you understand? Even if you read, you believe in God. God heaven help those who help themselves. You can't just stay and expect miracles to just happen. You have to work for it. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Stanley. Um, so I have a question, but before the question, let me just share a um, little thing of what I did. So the thing that I got that really, really made me happy was God cannot be manipulated by our prayers. Because growing up, I would call this a delusion. In fact, it's even bigger than that. That, ah, yeah, that you, you get more when you pray more. Your success is dependent on your prayer and fasting. Right now in Nigeria, like, it's, it's a norm. Everybody in Nigeria right now is praying and fasting for their year. And so they have done this like since they were born. <laughs> it's true. And it is against the world. It's worse. It's worse. It's worse. So God is not manipulated by our prayer and fasting. This has really made me happy. Another thing that really made me happy is just imagine now, you know that success is predictable. You know, growing up sometimes they tell us life is not fair. You have to work. Sometimes it comes out like this, other times it comes out like this. So sometimes with the knowledge of us, ah, sometimes it will be good. So you'll be motivated to really work hard because in your mind you are, you are thinking, what if I work hard and it, and it, and it doesn't come out good? Do you understand? But knowing that success <laughs> is, can be predicted, failure can be predicted. Right. It depends on what you do. Right? Your, your today, like Pastor said, is the product of your yesterday. Do you understand? And your tomorrow will, will be the product of what you do today. So this thing made me like happy. It gives me motivation to even work hard, knowing that when I work hard, just like God created the law of nature, I will get what I want of life. So I really... So um, finally, my question to, to this one is um, from the second law, um, I got to understand that the, the force you need to apply to attain the goal you want in life had to be equal at least to what you want. And sometimes people like, I know, I know all of us here have an overwhelming goal. That if you tell somebody, they will think you are crazy. So, like, I have a very big goal. And looking at the force that I need to apply, like you, sir, you're, from what you said yesterday and today, you're a person that you really want to change this whole world. I think you are sent to countries to really change countries, generations to come. And so, like, look at all that goal is too big. Now, if you are thinking of the force you will apply, sometimes you may get overwhelmed. So, in this situation, how can you, like, balance so that you won't get overwhelmed looking at, like, the force you need to apply and your goal, like, to balance everything so that you won't say, ah, how can I even do this? And then you just give up. The way to do it is this you do what I said yesterday, you divide your goal into smaller bits. Mm -hmm. It's just like eating an elephant. Mm -hmm. the, if you want to eat an elephant, the elephant is big, it yeah. can be the size of this house, that with this room. So you cut it into pieces, and then you say, okay, I want to eat all this elephant, elephant in this year. Mm -hmm. So there are 365 days in the year. So I'm going to cut it into 365 pieces. Mm -hmm. And I'm, then I'm going to divide that 365 into three parts so that I will be eating a three square meal a day. Mm -hmm. So that way, it's bit by bit that you can handle. So it's a big elephant. Though. And before, if you want to just see the elephant, the size of the elephant, and they say you should eat it, you will be scared. You say, how can I swallow this? But when you cut it into pieces, chewable pieces, just eat, you just need to do the piece you need to do for the day. Just eat the piece you need to eat for the morning, for the afternoon, for the evening. By the time you dis you know, three hundred and sixty-five days has passed, and no, there is no more elephant. You have eaten everything. <laughs> so you are it's, you are not starting by sh trying to chew everything at once, but you start from the little bit. So you have to have the big vision, divide it by the time amount of time you are looking at, and then into years, into uh, days. How many you should do in a day? And you are just doing what you are doing every day. And then by the time you get to that year that you have uh, mentioned for yourself, the goal is already met. Thank you so much.
sorts of blessings. Uh, Pastor, may I use this? Yes, please. Okay. Um, what, I, what I learned is a little bit, no, it's a little bit uh, different. Um, this is the same material, probably, that these are made from. So, um, this is a pen, and then if you use this pen to move this, it's moving. Now, if you use this same pen to move this, the pen moved back. It's almost like the three laws together. Both of them are static. They are in one position. This is the force, or this is the... Um, the um, propellant, and then you you move the same amount of force with both of them. This one moved. This one pushed it back, mm -hmm. so it hit back. Now, what I learned is yes, everything is going to remain the same as it is. That's the first law, except if you move it. At the same time, everything is not of the same size. There are different sizes for everything. If um, okay, most of us are medical students here. The amount of work you put into Latin is not the amount of work you put into anatomy. You're in trouble. <laughs> now, another thing is this: opposite. Um, each action is. Op we use this pen. It's the wrong thing to push the books. If I'm going to push the books, I should use this, and I should still add some more force to move it. So if you use the wrong kind of force, if you use the wrong kind of propellant, if you apply the wrong solution, it can backfire. That's what I got. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I actually uh, came to realize that through today's message and the message Though I was not present yesterday in the morning, I listened to about uh, 15 reasons why uh, pastors should change the, uh, the, the message they preach on the pulpit <laughs> are correlating together. Because By the way, I'm sorry, it's like you for mentioning that. I, for everyone watching us, if you have not discovered that message, 15 reasons why we pastors must change our message in the new year, if you have not listened to it, I beg you, do anything you can to go find it. It is the message I preach not last night, but two days ago in the evening. Go find it on YouTube, on YouTube. I mean, on Facebook. On my Facebook, go to the video section. You will see 15 reasons why we pastors must change our message. So please, you know, everybody needs to have a copy of that message. Everybody needs to go and listen to it and record it and copy it to your own uh, timeline. So go look for it. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay, um, the church of today is preaching a message of dependence yes. and people are becoming more lazy each and every day mm. there's a day i was talking to my sister we were actually chatting and she said i in the name of jesus i she said um i claim the the the, the salary of of, uh, of of a director uh. and i was like <laughs> i was like why did you just say, did I heard you well? And say, yes, I, I, don't you have faith? And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, how can you claim the salary of a director when you are not a director? Is that not um, uh, uh, daylight robbery? And she said, no, people are receiving miracle money. And, and that message of miracle money has been like giving me some mixed feeling, perhaps doubting myself, do I have faith? Or am I just uh, uh, a baby? Maybe I'm just coming. And I even like asked more, some of my pastors, like, uh, Pastor, if you like ten thousand dollars come to your <coughs> account, will you just start using it without finding out where it came from? Mm -hmm. Because as of me, if I even if it's not even it just ten dollars. I have to find out from the bank, like, where did this money come yes. from? They must find out where the money came from before I start using it. But now people, as soon as they receive something, it's like even if they pick somebody's thing on the floor, mm -hmm. it's miracle. Mm -hmm. It's my miracle. My prayers were, were, were answered. And this really is making people lazy. People are becoming more lazy. And the, today, the, 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 the pastors are also like, I don't know. Um, there's also another message that is coming on. Not really a message. That 
something that really makes me mad, I'm sorry to say this, the, the calling of people that tithe on, mm -hmm. on the front to come and be prayed for. Mm -hmm. It's like now tithing has become like the center. Do they do, they do that? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not seeing that. It's happening now, like most churches. I, and I don't know where it came from or how it happened to be in the church of Anybody Christ. Anybody have seen that? Yes. <laughs> It, it, I, I keep thinking that this is an intimidation to intimidate all the members so that they can <laughs> give yeah. whatever they yeah. don't have. They make sure they come to the front mm -hmm. and be prayed for. Because you on, the people only get to pray for those that come in front mm -hmm. to tithe. God to bless you more. And everybody will want to be blessed most. So these are the people that will come probably and still you don't even know where the money came from so that the person can come and tithe. Mm -hmm come and do anything so that they come in front and tithe and be prayed for for the miracles and miracle money to appear on their account. But the message of miracle money on their account What is miracle one. money? I've not heard of that. Money oh. <laughs> 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 appears on your accounts. Uh, huh? Money appears on your accounts. Just like that. People preach that? Yes. yes. Uh, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> Receiving money on that. Are you serious? Yes, sir. Coming from nowhere. Miracle. Have money. you heard of that? Yes. Supernatural wealth yes. transfer. Mm -hmm. Supernatural wealth transfer to your account. Yes. No, I've heard about the money, the wealth of the Ungodly. yeah, on God ever your word of the sinners yes. and laid off. I heard of that one, but money transfer to miracle yes. money. I never heard of that one in the account. Yes, raise up your credit card. Are you serious? I've, I've, I am, I am highly old fashioned. Huh? I didn't even know those things happen. You had a body? Okay. Yeah? I had. Uh, and if, even, it's everywhere on Facebook. People are claiming, if you want miracle money, type I men. Yes. And, and that one is also bringing laziness to people because they will be expecting that. And so the prophecy, you can perhaps receive a prophecy and the prophecy is real and true. <laughs> But the prophet she will not it. come by the name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking about now the miracle of money. That one is daylight robbery. See, see, you cannot be satisfied using money that appeared on your account f without knowing where it came from. I must found out from the bank. Why is this money on my account? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before I use it. And even if they found the person that put it on my account, I must see that person. They should have the person's account. They should connect and tell me, why did you put this money on my account? Something of that sort. It's really, people are now becoming more lazy because of that yeah. miracle things, things. And the, the prophecy maybe towards your life, it can be true, but don't expect that you are told you are going to be the next president of Nigeria and you are at home city. Not even developing yourself to be the next president of Nigeria. I'm telling you, you find yourself underground without receiving. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now I want to just give everybody the, you know, the opportunity for you to give your general concept of what your decisions are going to be. Or what your personal worldview, what are the things that you think are going to change in your worldview, in your understanding, or even in some actions that you might want to take from where you are? Just raise up your hand and stand and talk. Yes, please. Pray less, act more. Not any simplicity. No more of the gymnastics, the somersaulting, the frothing of the mouth, Frank, the shaking, the shaking, and all that. Simple, my father, and then I go and do. That's it. So, so you want to emphasize more relationship with God, personal relationship with God, without gymnastics, without religiosity. Father-daughter relationship. 
as the priority. Yes. And then go and do what you need to do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, stop stealing. That's it. Stop stealing. Um, in, what does that mean? Um, if you stop look, stealing. Yes. Stop stealing. When you expect great results, don't give in less and expect... Wow. When you expect great results, don't give in less. Mm. Mm. Work hard. Mm. Do what you have to do. If it means toiling in the night, do it. Don't steal. Because when you expect great results and you are giving less than required, you are actually stealing. Our churches are full of thieves and fraudsters. And we think we are holy. God have mercy. Um, I have learned that if you see people doing things that you want to do and you're getting results, be willing to ask them what they did to get that result. Like it's not pride, it's not um, humility, it's not um, doesn't mean you're less than them to ask them how did you get this result? Because I remember I have classmates in medical school. And sometimes <coughs> teacher will ask questions, some of us will say the basic stuff, but some people they give extra answers and you'll be like, ah, where is this one getting his stuff from? But be willing to go ahead and ask, what sources do you use? How long, how do you prepare? I think you should be able to go that extra mile to ask people. You see them getting results. Okay, overall I've learned that uh, everything I do or we do has consequences. Mm -hmm. My eating that I eat a lot, I gain weight. <laughs> so everything I do, my talking, my walking, my sleeping, everything that I do in life has consequences. Mm -hmm. And I have to work on that. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that um, you have to be more sensitive to things inside of you, things around you, and um, sensitive to God. Because um, with what everyone has talked about, and with what Pastor Emily has spoken about, because if you look at it, um, if you look at psychologists, the way they work and the way they help people is that they listen to you, they listen to your problems, they listen to um, what is actually going on with you. Basically, you've already opened your life to them. <coughs> and then they use that same thing to treat you. And even if they give you even if they give you all that um, diagnosis, that, okay, and this is what you should do, this is how you can get better, and you don't put it into action, you will still be the same way. But what they do is that they listen to you, and they are sensitive to your words. You know, if you look at their offices, they're always so serene, so peaceful, you know, the lights are always there, it's very comfortable chair. You are very comfortable because and you are opening yourself up to, to them very well. You open everything, they ask you the right questions, you know, so that they can use that question, that answer they're going to give to them. To be. So, if anyone, if we all, and if Nigerians and everybody can be more sensitive to what is inside of you, you yourself can be your own, um, your own prophet. You, you yourself can prophesy into your life because with that, you can, you know, you can know what where you are going, how you know the next step to take, how to take it, and the area necessary today. You can just even not be for your own self, but if you are also sensitive to people around, around you, your loved ones, your group mates, your classmates, your friend, you can look at their own life and be able to tell them that look. You are doing this particular wrong, and if you do this this particular way, it brings prosperity into your life also. Mm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what I learned is uh, a discovery of the laws that already exist. We have everything that already exists. Exist. Um, there is something that we usually Africans we argue against, especially when it comes to who discovered America. <laughs> Uh, usually, the, 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 the layman will say that, well, the Indians were there before. And they say that Columbus was, not, was wrong that he claimed that he discovered America. Well, in actual fact, from his perspective, he was right because he discovered America for the Europeans. Mm -hmm. So we need to discover the things that are already there and also record them as Africans because most of our African history has been lost because mm -hmm. we don't note what we discovered and the laws are there and 
uh, we don't transfer them to the next generation. So mm -hmm. we need to discover the laws that are there and then make sure to transfer them to the next generation. Hello, everyone. Um, so there's something that Pastor said today again, and uh, it's just a one-liner for me. Um, he said that Jesus did not bring religion into this world. He brought a um, personal relationship with God. So I think um, your personal relationship with God is what you need to build, not you going to church and the amount of tight you're putting in or the amount of offering or you walking behind this person. You know, you need to work on what you have to have with God and that's, that's the bottom line and that's, that's about it. That's how it should be. everyone. Um, one thing I want to, um, I learned from this um, section is that we, we, we can actually create our own future. Our future is in our hands. And another important thing is that we have to um, kind of avoid mediocrity. Um, dependence also on our government systems, individuals that would help us. And that if we want to change our world, we have to ask what can we do in our, in our immediate environment to change our surroundings mm -hmm. and not what um, people can do or what we can receive from individuals. Or... Because the, the gospel that is being preached right now in the churches is a gospel of dependency. Mm -hmm. To be expecting something from people, always hoping somebody will give me this, or the open job, somebody will bless you, mm -hmm. and then waiting for the government and you know people to do this for you instead of taking your life into your own hands. Beautiful. Good day, everyone. Um, I think I'm going to be talking generally concerning we wasting time in churches and think we're actually serving God with that. Because most people that have an exact mentality that when you're going to church, say that again. Okay. we wasting yeah. time going to church. No, no, say, say that completely. That some, yeah. Some people okay. I want us to change the mentality that while going to church, we think we are serving God, why, in, not knowing that we are actually wasting time. I can go straight like that. Okay, so, so a we, lot of what we do in church is it's waste of time, not really serving God, and that is they actually make us realize if you don't come to church in a day, you are actually maybe you backslided or you are doing something else. I know of a church that we actually go to church every day. And as a, as, a, as a student, I wonder how you can read and actually achieve what God has actually put in your life to achieve. You don't have time for yourself. You don't have time for your life. You don't even have time for your family. You don't have time to do any other thing. So I want us to change that mentality that when you sit right with you and with God, things can still happen. It's not only when you waste your time and just go from morning till evening that things happen for you. It is your life. And if it is your life, it is your right. right. Amen. Amen. So, now, I think almost in our place and in our countries, a huge chunk of time is taken over by the church. Yes. So how can we invent? How can we discover? How can we bring solutions out to the problems plaguing the nation when we don't have time to do that? Invest in children, education. How can we be the best? How can we lead the, the world? So people actually believe that by being in church, they're serving God? Yeah. Um, for me, um, through this teaching, I got three action points. First of all is to make research on what and how I can change the level I am now. Find the right force that needs to be applied and apply that. <laughs> Number two, me as a student, to be the best student, I need to be the best reader. 
to get a distinction, I have to get be a distinction reader. To be the best, to the richest millionaire, I have to be the richest hard worker. I have to be rich in hard work. And thirdly, I learned that nothing happens by nothing. For something to happen, I have to do something. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, for me, overall, I learned like uh, everything that we do, like everything, whether we are in school or maybe we are uh, studying or we are chatting with some friends. Everything we do, we are serving God. Amen. <coughs> Good day, everyone. Um, for me, I think it's the missing link in my life that I should make everything count. I should explain for every action. And no, we do, we do things sometimes thinking that we are doing the right thing, whereas we cannot explain why we do them. And, and I believe that's why Jesus brought the consciousness to us that there is something called judgment day, that you are to give account of everything you did while you are on earth. So first, for me, I learned that I should make every of my actions, I should explain them, not just explaining them, they should be convincing and they should make people realize that what I have achieved is because of what I have done. And I could explain them. <laughs> then secondly, um, I shouldn't depend more on uh, God because uh, pastors are, to be honest with you, the message in Africa is horrible. It's really horrible. And I have seen with my very eyes that uh, if you don't serve in church, you are not serving God. If you are not serving in choir, you are not serving God. And to make the matters worse, I've seen service organized. They call it anointing for service. And the service is not um, maybe going into the world. It's serving in church. So we've confined ourselves to, 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 to church. Whereas, whereas God created us for his pleasure that even if I am, even if I, 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 I end up becoming a scientist, as, as you rightly said about Isaac Newton. He was the greatest scientist. We're all enjoying what he did. And he was a true man of God. So I shouldn't just limit myself to the church. I shouldn't just limit myself. I should go and show God. Praise the Lord. Um, what I've learned so far is that um, for every goal that wants to be achievable, it's actually a process. That not, nothing just comes instantaneously. Like nobody just became great instantaneously. Nobody just became great like, like pack, 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 or just like <laughs> just like that. Everything actually was everything actually was a process and guided by principles. Praise the Lord. I am proud to say that I'm so proud to say that um, today. That I've never. You can come out. Oh, okay. Okay. First of all, Pastor Sandra, I just want to thank you so much for teaching us and expounding the uh, the understanding of principles and laws. Because you know why? For a long, long time, I saw the law as something religious. So I always wanted to shy away because it's always used as a do's and don'ts. So it's rather than. Um, rather than the law drawing me closer to God, it was taking me away from God. It was causing me to, to, to step back. But today I've learned that the laws are there. They're already put in there by my Father God to make everything work perfectly. For my benefit, for your benefit, so that we can impact our world. I mean, what a gift. So today I embrace, I mean... I'm going to study laws and principles like never before in every area of my life. I'm going to be a, a, a studious student of laws and principles. I'm going to check every area of my life, get all, all of Pastor Sandy's books, and make sure that I'm applying them. I know it's a process, but this is my, my PhD or whatever, the highest edu education out there. That is going to be my journey. From today, I embrace the laws of God. I think they're the most beautiful thing that my father has given me. I celebrate, I celebrate my father for giving me such wonderful, powerful, 
beautiful laws that can make a difference in my life and actually to make God beautiful, make him proud so that when people look at me or you, they will want to come and know God for themselves. That's it. So I just got this now. There's something Pastor Joshua usually says. He says, nobody is going to get into heaven by mistake. Yeah, like, um, if you're going to get into heaven, you know, like, you are, because you put in work to get into heaven. You put in work to make heaven. You're not just going to die tomorrow and find yourself in heaven when you know you've not been working for heaven. It's not going to happen. The same way, nobody becomes great by mistake. Mm. You don't mistakenly become great. As much as Thomas Edison might have mistakenly found electricity, he mm. failed a hundred times, wow. for God's sake. Wow. He failed so many times. He didn't get there by mistake. He walked to get to that point. Okay, maybe you might be like the first person that, let's even talk about alcohol. The first person that found alcohol, I'm sure it was not by mistake. He might have been experimenting. Mm. And then... That's just what got into my head. Thank you. Somebody said, when, when I walk 18 hours a day, continuously, then I begin to get lucky. Luck begins to work for me. Because you have walked 18 hours a day. Then that's when you are lucky. That's when mistakes begin to happen. <laughs> yes, good morning. Good day, everyone. My name is Nkiru Niki, as most of you know me. And there's something I want to say. Pastor gave this uh, sermon a day before yesterday concerning uh, pastors changing their messages this year. But I want to do another appeal to everybody that go to a confirmed church or to any four walls. If you go to a place where messages are preached that you know has nothing to do with you, has nothing to do with your passion, has nothing to do with what you already know, especially those of us that have been on this life, brokers for some long, for some time, and those of us that are listening now. You standing there to be applauding this man of God, you are a co thief or what do you call it? Yeah. You will be judged together. You know? I once saw a diagram. I think it was Brass <laughs> Sunset. You know, there was, a, there was a ditch, a very big ditch. This pastor was standing there on top of the ditch. There was a plank, and all the members were standing there. They are the ones supporting the pastor. If anybody leaves, the pastor will fall into the ditch. And this is exactly what we do. But we are blaming the pastor, but we are the ones that are helping him to sin. When you are in a church where you know that, not the word of God is being preached there. When you know that the pastor preaches himself, when you know that maybe he started well, but he has derailed from the message that he has given, though he still says that he still preaches the same thing, but you know that he has derailed because it is not working in your life. Though some people might come out and give some testimonies that they found money under their pillow or they picked money. You know, as a matter of fact, I've been in a church where a pastor said that he picked, he was going, found money, picked it, looked left, looked round, nobody is there, he put it in his pocket. Which is exactly what pastor is saying today. You don't do that. Why not just ask, say, anybody, did you lose your money? You know? But we don't do that. We call everything that comes into our account our own, and we still call other people thieves. So we should change our mindset to this. We can't, they say, the reason why evil tribe is when uh, innocent men keep quiet or something like that. So why should you keep quiet? I'm not telling you to go and rebel. I'm not telling you to go and fight any man of God or pastor. But if you know within you, your conscience is telling you this is not right, why are you supporting it by staying there? The, the Lord will judge you together, okay? The, the Lord will judge you for your actions. So, save yourself and save your generation by standing up for the truth. We are not working for any man of God on this earth. We are not working even for ourselves. We are working for his kingdom. And our focus should be to enhance everything that enhances the kingdom, even to our own heart. That should be our motto and that should be our goal. Forget about the name that we'll be called because it is 
everybody knows that I'm from Kharkov. If you don't know, know now. There's a city in Ukraine they call Kharkov. And the religiosity in that city is just off this earth. Yes. You know, every church draws its blanket yes. when Christians should be together, but it is just too terrible. So save your lives and serve the God that has given you everything that he has given you. People are in churches and their talents are dying because the man of God told them you don't go there to sing, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not the one, he's not the one that gave you the talent. God gave it to you. If you waste it, just like the, the, the parable of the talent, you will answer one day. So let's be wise and listen and listen again. Okay, let me talk about another thing, about me. <laughs> Concerning my own life, this is what I'm gonna do. This is a new year I started doing. To analyze all those places that I know that I'm losing. Because most of the time, I've been running with 10 years old, 10 year olds, and they're calling me champion. <laughs> but I'm 44. I'm supposed to run with my mates. By mates, not just by age. The, okay, Pastor, you're just 50. <coughs> Can you compare our levels to understand what I'm saying? This is his level, and I'm 44. It's not that I didn't have the chances to learn these things, but I've been stubborn doing religion. I've been stubborn following the wrong places. I've been stubborn pleasing men instead of sitting down, putting myself in this prison that he preaches and do what I'm going to do. So my thing now is to analyze my life. I have analyzed my life. The two main places that I know I'm lacking is in my finances and in my health. And nobody will do it for me. Nobody forced me to put McDonald's in my mouth. <laughs> nobody forces me you know, not to get some books and put some wisdom in my life and start acting. Because most of the time we read a lot and we don't do anything with those things. Mm -hmm. I have been in church for more than 10 years and I've been reading this book, I've been learning these things. So, if you leave this place, let it just be I've been talking to, but let's do. Let's make a plan and do what we have learned, okay? Thank you. Um, very quickly, I just want to talk about people who are like me. I don't know. Um, there, are there are people like me. By if I say by me, I mean people who, you know, um, they have been in churches. They know something is. They are not comfortable, even though they can't tell you straightly that something is wrong. I've been in this church, and in my heart, I know something is wrong. But because of there was no knowledge, there was no like um, a, a good um, tutor. There was I, I couldn't just pick out what was wrong. It got to an extent that I couldn't fit in it in, in church. And then, and it looks as if I was backsliding because that's what you know people the prof say. yes people say I'm backsliding. And when they preach a message, I try so much like to accept the message. Like sometimes I I pray. I say God, why am I like I pray and fast for my heart. I say my heart is a very unfettered, like, you know, I do a lot of things and still yet, I just don't get the answer. Now, there are, there are people like, like that in churches. I'm just speaking on, on behalf of them. You see, I, I, I started listening to um, my Monroe. So he started changing my, my, my mind little by little, little by little until I started listening to um, Pastor Sunday Aguilar. So if you are in that category, I want to tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. It's normal when you are in an environment that doesn't suit you. It's always uncomfortable. It's always, I have friends in other cities. These people, they are talented. I don't want to call their name because of their choices. These people, they are super, super talented. If, if, if they can just, if their church can release them, just to minister in a place, it's. Do you understand? But these people, they know, but they don't want to go against, you know, their church and their pastor because of the whole religious system mindset, yeah. it took me time for me to break out of it. I had to say, okay, I'm done with this. Leadership, I don't want. Yeah. Minister, I don't want. Yeah. Choir leader, I don't want. Yeah. Right. It took, it, it, uh, it takes courage and confidence. Right. But this is something that you have to do. It's yes. your life. Yes. Yes. At the end of the day, after six years, you will leave Ukraine. Right. And you pass through this Ukraine, ending up just attending uh, maybe um, Diplo. and Diplo. And it's not uh, as if, uh, of course, uh, and it's not as if, in fact, when you go back to Nigeria, you have to write another exam. So, so the whole something, it doesn't make sense. Right. It's your life. Mm 
It's your life. I'm talking to people that are like me. It's your life. You have to take control of it. Your pastor will not live your life for you. Yeah, yeah. In fact, your pastor do not understand you. We are living in, in an age where everybody wants to be the solution to every problem. So they make it dependent on them. So when, when the answer is not in them, they will tell you you have to wait on God. You have to pray more. But this is not the solution. You have to go out, do what is necessary. If it, if it means, I'll say it bluntly, if it means living, live. It's your life. This is your life. So this is what I have to say. God bless you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Success. And, um... Success is the one who blame for this conference. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, uh... He's the one who challenged me that we should do it. Yeah. I was already not interested. But... <laughs> Thank you so much, so Pastor. You you. Thank you, sir. And um, I, I think I will just start from there because um, something peculiar is happening right here. And I don't want us to uh, lose sight of it. Because God is doing something spe uh, spectacular in this Ukraine. Personally, I have no doubt in my heart. After 10 years of medical school, again, I say to people that God brought me to Ukraine to meet Pastor Sunday. Absolutely. It's, that was just destiny for me. And um, if you look at it critically, like um, somebody was saying, in Ukraine, we have like... Very, some very set of interesting people, great ideas, great leaders. The singular problem that we all have is church. It's the problem of religion. And I've discovered that you choose to waste your life by yourself. Absolutely. You know, for every one of us, it's never going to be convenient. There are going to be hard choices that you have to take. And the longer time you delay, the more you waste your life. Look, nobody knows. I used to say to people, Jesus Christ himself, he just stayed three and a half years on earth. And the impact we are here to recover from it till now. Martin Luther King, never, he, he was just 40 when he was shot. And today he has a singular day that is dedicated to his memory in the United States. So I'm saying the game to us, the challenge for us is to take all these things and all these feelings and reactions and to go wrong with it. We don't have apologies to anybody. By the grace of God, I strongly believe that in Ukraine, God is raising people through Pastor Sunday, men who are going to transform the continent of Africa. Yes, and it's never going to be easy. We are not saying it's, it's going to be, you know, I, I have a very funny experience that we used to buttress that. Spending 10 years in medical school, I don't think it was God's choice per se, but that was just the choice that we, we made. Because the first set in my former school, uh, the government were telling us all kinds of things. The school were telling us, and we kept on praying. We were just praying. Every Friday, we have vigils, fastings, and prayers, giving all kinds of prophecies to ourselves in Nigeria. And we waited the first year, nothing happened. The second year, nothing happened. The third year, nothing happened. The fourth year, nothing happened. Until one day, we were still, in fact, at the point the school gave us and said, look, maybe we could take other courses, microbiology. We will sort out your problem. And we said, okay, no problem, we are believing God. This is what God is saying. And we went to those classes until we heard that our junior students, um, oh, um, Adido is one of them, they are already protesting at the, government of, at the governor's office. They were already protesting, they had blocked the road and everything. And then we went ahead, that was at the point that we went to join them. And do you know it was that week that the government decided to solve this situation that same week? That the government said, look, oh, we are, acted. That because we acted. Because oh, they, they acted and we joined them. So they acted and we joined them. The we did. The the and the <laughs> At all. Nothing changed. The judge never moved. <laughs> and then the government said, look, the first two classes that we are going to send abroad to study, your, the other classes, they were going to be left behind. And these guys, again, they took it upon themselves. The guys that took the first action to protest, to uh, bring the government to consciousness. So they took a step again continued with some of these, you know, met with very prominent people and all that. And the government included them. The government, in fact, they were almost times three of our own number, but the government had no choice. They took decision. The same thing can happen to the whole of, of, of Africa. If young people, as we are, we decide with, you know, this message to run. Right now, people are saying all kinds of things. You know, I just basically do writings and all that. And people are screaming. They say, Pastor Sunday has breath on me, and I don't care. Really. And I said to them, look, I'm just writing. I've not just started talking. Because it's going to be more, you know, we have to run with it. Whatsoever thing that you can do, you have to begin to do something. Africa is waiting for all of us. And I believe by God's grace that it begins from this room. God at first. Thank you. 
mention that 15 messages. Why, and then you moved on to talk about your sister. Yes. Yeah, I remember that you didn't really say what you were trying to say by mentioning that you listened. You said you went to back to listen to it. What were you saying? What did you want to say? <coughs> so you went to listen. You are not there at the message, but you went to listen. What yeah, do you want to say? Um, Stand up, please, if you don't mind. I was actually just referring that uh, is the pastors. I okay. mean, our country, our continent, it's how it is today because of the way the <coughs> preaching is going on. Yes. It's not, I mean, church affects everyday life. Right. It affects um, um, every society, whether they are Christian or non-Christian. Because most, when you see most of the African countries, they have the highest percentage of, of Christians. Yeah. That means in every atmosphere of, I mean, every sphere of, society. of life, mm -hmm. uh, society, there is a Christian somewhere that supposed to make an impact, that's supposed to, to, to make an influence. But instead of, I mean, but because of the preaching that is going on in the church, they are actually just also just giving what they are receiving. We, 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 as I said, we, we, the church is preaching dependence. Mm. And when we give, when the church gives out that message of dependence, even the Christian society spread the, 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 the same message to their kids. And we are no mm. more raising children that are, that are eager to work hard and be a, 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 and raise another generation of 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 of, of, of let me say self reliance people people that are, are, are eager to do something people that are, are hunger for 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 for, 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 excellence. Ha, for excellence and hard work we are raising people that are just sitting and waiting it shall happen because my pastor said so as he said but if we change our message to the, for example, to the laws, to the three laws of Newton that were just made, I'm telling you, Christians are going to make impact. Christians Amen. are going to change the world. Amen. Christians are going to rule the world. Christians are going to dominate, uh, to, dominate. To dominate as God orders us to do. Amen, amen. Just by changing our message. Yes, but just changing the message. But, but not... Um, Manipulating people's minds <laughs> to for, for their for, 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 for our own gain. Let me say for preachers' gain. Selfish, yeah. Yeah, selfish, selfish gain. Yeah. Because now it's just a pride. I own 12 pride, uh, 20 private jets. Mm -hmm. I'm the richest pastor. I have the highest, um, uh, the greatest members in the world. Oh, Such things. We are not changing anything. And if oh, we, we are not changing anything, one thing is that. With that, okay, they want to be rich, they want people to tithe. But if you develop people's minds and people become self reliant, people become the people will become rich and they will eventually tithe the same tithe that you are looking for. But because ourselves, I can also just bring them, I can maybe say, give it also the blame way from the roots, like the people that uh, got their first message and misinterpreted it because. If it, they, I can tell you that most preachers don't know, don't also know this message you are just giving us. They don't know it. They just grabbed a part of what they, have been taught. they taught and they went to the Bible and produced their faith and the, the trade goes on from one generation to the next. But if we can really change that message and develop the people that are in our churches those people will grow and those people are the ones that are going to grow people in the church and when people in the church when people outside see yes these people are really growing not because they are typing amen because i'm telling you in every facebook i can see 20 people uh, there's somebody on the day typing amen to every <laughs> prophecy that appear on the screen you have been typing amen from january to december nothing is changing and it can only change when you implement, when you deviate your focus from the wrong thing and put it on the right path, there you will go. The message on the pulpit really need to change. It really need to focus on the true principles of God. Why 
why, why really God uh, uh, um, created the universe? It's like now is the universe that is dominating us. Mm. We have become so dependent. Like we are just waiting. Amen. Amen. I, I take it by faith. By fire, by force. <coughs> I just have his like your question and um, the suggestion. Um, uh, I, as she was talking, I kind of um, started thinking of um, people um, that have invented, invented things or have contributed um, to the society. And it also made me realize that those, those people, they are actually Christians, like Sir Isaac Newton, um, Rockefeller, and some other people that have impacted. Um, what things, it, it got me thinking, what things were they listening to, or what um, ways, or were they, like, <coughs> what were their attitudes towards life? Okay. What principles of life do they have? And in, like, what was just their thought process that led them to achieve those things that they achieved and she wants to answer it. It's, a, it's actually a, a good question because those people when not uh, uh, they did not have access to 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 the gadgets that are now confusing us is because I think it's the increasing of the, the, the of technology that is also manipulating is being used to manipulate people you know because then they were not influenced by what other person is a, saying they were specifically on the principles of the word of God. That was only what they had and the, and, and the imagination and the thoughts that they have put in their head and what the Holy Spirit is putting into their heart. But for us now, the Holy Spirit is saying this. Because, but because the pastor is saying that, he is the pastor, he is the man of God. Papa, <laughs> he's correct. His word is not. Yeah. His word is it's what is here and him, the yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like he's the only one that received the, from, from God. Yeah. Like you, he's like the, the channel, the source. So whatever he feeds, the, the, everybody focus on. Let me, let me answer that question. Uh, why is it that actually what you said, not just Isaac Newton, but actually 75% of all inventions and discoveries in the world have come from the so-called Christian, Christian nations and by Christians. And the reason is because I will probably have to, I'm writing a book on that and I have an article on why most inventions of the world is coming from the Christian world and what message or what messages were preached those days. What happened is that the messages that are being preached today the Christianity never knew it before. Mm -hmm. This was never the message that Christianity was preaching before. These messages that we are all talking, hearing about now, breakthrough, inst miracles, uh, instant you know, gratification, all these messages now, they are new messages. They are not the messages of the, God, of the original Christians. So there is a message that I have, I which I'm going to release to you, I hope, tomorrow, is called Protestants, uh, is Protestants and how they change the world. Mm -hmm. What Protestants believed and how they used it to change the world. So the Protestants used to have their belief system totally different from what we have today. Mm -hmm. So the messages of the early Christians <coughs> and the early Protestants, they are totally different from the messages that we know today. So those are some of the things we need to restore back to the church. Mm -hmm. We need to restore back to the church the messages, the original messages that the apostles preached, mm -hmm. the original messages that the early Christians preached, that made them to change the whole world. Mm -hmm. You see, it is the message that we preach that is going to determine what we are going to produce. It means that if they were able to produce the result that changed the whole world from being 12 people, mm -hmm. it means that that message worked. Mm -hmm. It worked for them. So from 12 people, they could conquer the whole world, subdue everything. Because they had the right message. That is what we need to restore and return to the church. Then the Protestants, the people who discover our civilization and industrialization and you know, industrial progress, yeah, that we have right now, that we're enjoying, to, they were the Protestants. They were also Christians. 
So these Protestants, they had a different gospel as well. One of their main gospel core of the Protestant revolution that changed Europe and brought about our modern civilization today is one particular, let me just tell you one of the things that they used to teach, they used to teach about. That is to uphold the dignity of labor. Just one, they believe that all of them are, in fact, as a matter of fact, at a point in Geneva, if you don't work, even if you are blind and lame, you have to work. Because the teaching was that it is only through work you could glorify God. Mm. So yeah, if today we are saying that it is only through service in the church, mm -hmm. in the other time, in their own time, it was that it, it is only by what you produce. Mm. So everybody began to produce something. They began to work hard. Then another thing they preach is that we were made in the image and likeness of God. So that if God is the creator of the universe, that we are also co-creators, we are like him, we are in his image. We are supposed to be creating like him. Yeah. So inventions and creativity just started exploding. Yeah. Everybody started looking for what to create. Can you imagine that now in our churches, everybody in every church, people are just uh, teaching that we are all supposed to be creators. We are supposed to you know, invent something that because you are having the image of God <coughs> and the likeness of God that there is an invention in you. Can you imagine that that's what we are hearing from morning to night, from morning to night, from morning to night? You will definitely come up with something that you like it or not. Yes. That is how 75% of all inventions came from the Christian. So it is what we preach that produces who we are. Yes, sir. It is what we preach that produces the society we have. It is what we preach that produces the people we have. So if we are now producing dependent people, it's because we have dependent yes. message. But if we are going to preach the right message, change our message, we are going to produce corresponding people. You know, it's still the law. It's still the law, the second law, all right, or the, fourth, the third law. So it is what we do that will give us the result we need. Thirty years ago, there was even nothing like this in Nigeria. The most, in fact, in Nigeria, um, all banks and government agencies, they used to come to pastors and churches to beg them to give their members to come and work in banks. Because they are the only people that could be trusted. But now, nobody wants to have them. <laughs> yeah, because the messages have changed. Instant gratification fear. So even this message that we are having now, that people are teaching, it never used to be like that 30 years ago. So what the type of Christianity you know now is no more Christianity. It's not, it's no more the call. To a large extent. It's been compromised and diluted too much. Mm 